Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, real shell veneer to coat yours. And I have some Korean Avobi here, which has tape on the other side. And I'm not sure if you can see it, it has clear tape on the other side. This is just to prevent the material from cracking later on when I'm going to be handling it, and uh, especially when I'm going to be gluing it onto the lure. And of course, this is just to prevent the material from cracking, because as many of you guys who have uh, used this uh, material before know that it's very brittle and will crack very easily. So I figured that tape would be a perfect solution for the problem. So, um, just using my top border lure here to um, trace out the outlines. And of course I try to be very unwasteful because this is pretty expensive stuff as many of you guys who have uh, used this material before know of course uh, the imitation is much more cheaper than this real raw shell veneer but I prefer to use the real deal and um, oh by the way this stuff is uh, actually uh, 0 0.08 millimeters thick and uh, it's uh, I would say it's pretty easy to work with so far at least but then again I haven't been able to find anything that's uh, a little bit um, thinner than this if I would be able to find something that, of course, that would be better than this, for sure, but uh, so far I'm stuck with uh, 0.08 millimeters. And there we go. Alright, uh, it's time to start and play with some epoxy. And the kind of epoxy that I use is uh, 5 minutes set time. So that means I have to work pretty fast. But that shouldn't be a problem because the lower that I'm going to be uh, doing it's not very big. So I just uh, started smearing the epoxy onto the uh, Awabi shell veneer. And of course, uh, goes without saying that I'm putting it onto the side that doesn't have uh, the tape on. And I just uh, try to smear it onto the uh, sheets or strips as evenly as I can so that I don't have any any spots that doesn't have any epoxy on them. You kind of have to um, take your time with this because sometimes you might get uh, uh, pools that doesn't have uh, the epoxy on them so make sure that every, every spot is uh, covered. So here goes the first strip and I'm not actually pressing them on to the lure at this point. I'm going to let the rubber bands actually do that for me. And uh, let's align them. And here goes the first rubber band. And usually when I put the first rubber band onto the lure, uh, I actually put it on kind of loosely so that it make it is easier for me to actually align the strips like I'm doing here because they do tend to move a lot especially when you are when you're putting the first few rubber bands on and uh, the next one I usually tend to put a little bit more uh, well, not, not as loose as I put the first one. And of course, 
uh, I always align the strips evenly because later on when you when you put the rubber more rubber bands on the lure uh, it becomes more harder for you to actually move the strips on on the lure so it pays off to you know have them uh, as evenly as uh, human possible in the first stages and then it's just a matter of uh, putting hell of a lot of rubber bands on the lure Oh yeah, and I, I forgot to mention that uh, you definitely should use some sort of uh, protection on your hands because uh, epoxy isn't exactly healthy for your hands and uh, yeah, it is a kind of pain in the ass to you know get off later on as well so be sure to protect your hands with uh, some latex gloves uh, The ones I'm using here are pretty much the cheapest one you can get from the from a store. Uh, I think these are pretty close to the uh, rubber gloves that uh, doctors use when performing operations and shots. And uh, if uh, if you see um, bulging or sharp edges um, around the edge of the of the veneer of your cough course, uh, it is a good idea to press onto them, like I'm doing here. You know, just to make sure that uh, the edges are nice and even, because that. Uh, saves you a lot of time later on when you're actually clear coating the floor. And even more rubber bands. I usually try to, you know, get uh, as much pressure onto the onto the um, strips that I possibly can. And here you go. Now it's just to... Alright, now that the epoxy has completely cured, I'm gonna start unpeeling off the rubber bands. And uh, usually they come off really easily, but it seems like this is not one of those times, so I'm just gonna rip them off, pretty much. And really you might as well, because they are very, very cheap to buy. So, it doesn't really matter that much. Although I am kind of a cheap ass, so I usually always try to get them off in a way that they are still reusable. There you go. So I've uh, peeled off the tape from from the doors and uh, scraped off uh, most of the excess epoxy that uh, was left from the um, rubber bands and the overall epoxying. And uh, of course, I also figured I would actually show you guys how I varnish my lures uh, most of the time. Uh, be it from uh, this uh, veneer sheet or from foil. So I usually just uh, dip them to this uh, 
one part lure varnish uh, called uh, CAB hard which is actually probably only available here in Finland unfortunately because this stuff is pretty pretty damn good it has a um, hardening time of uh, 30 minutes so it's very handy all right after about six layers of the uh, CAB varnish uh, I usually always end up sanding them because you know they always have some bumps and bruises on them anyway so you know just uh, one way of making everything look a little bit more professional when it's all nice and smooth and of course those edges usually always end up uh, being there anyway even you you would have to add a hell of a lot of uh, layers on here if, if you wanted to get rid of those completely and uh, since these are supposed to be top water lures and of course uh, varnish and epoxy always add a little bit more weight um, I may up end up having sinking top water lures and that's that's no good so I usually end up having um, pretty thin layers of of um, varnish and epoxy as well but yeah anyway um, the grit I'm using uh, to sand is uh, 150 I could go to 100 I think but uh, I usually end up having 150 anyway because you know I don't want to sand too much off and potentially damage the uh, surface if I sand through it, through it, so you know, just a precaution I think is always, um, you know, good to have. But anyway, I think it's it, this might be a little bit boring to watch, but uh, basically I always end up starting from the back and then do the bottom and then the sides after that, and make sure that I don't have any shiny parts left and that everything is nice and smooth it's always good good idea to if if you're not sure uh, just you know Try the lure with your hand, yeah, with your thumb. Uh, it's always a good indication of if you um, to find uh, those uh, bumps and bruises that might be on the lure. Because sometimes you might actually not not see them and miss them. So it's a good idea to you know go through the lure with your finger once in a while. I think I'm almost done here. So now that I have uh, painted a couple of these, I just figured I would uh, show you guys what the end result might look like. Let me try and focus here. And as you can see, it looks pretty damn awesome. Looks very lively in the, in the light. Take this one. This is that Wawa uh, Abalone, or however you would pronounce that. Oh, damn hook. But yeah, anyway, um, be sure to click the like button if you like this little tutorial of mine, and of course, uh, I always appreciate those comments as well. So, I guess, until next time.